Good morning. How are you today, guys? Can you hear me okay? Sorry about the noise, I just might dropped a few things. So today, guys, we're going to be drawing a very simple composition of some apples. You guys like apples? We're going to use some charcoal. Today, very pleased to meet you too. So we're going to start this composition off using some charcoal. Now I'm going to take my charcoal breaker piece off. And then I'm going to draw the basic outlines of my apples. using feathery little marks, very lightly touching. I want to make sure I give myself plenty of space on the page. I've got two apples. I want to make sure I can fit them both in. Just making some vague marks here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just to fill in the basic details of where everything's going to sit and we'll come back in with some detailed drawing later. Oh, good morning. How are you? Glad to see you. I've seen some of your recent portrait work. It's very impressive. Do you do anything else or just portraits? Good morning, DM. How are you today? Camera shaky. Yeah, I'm good, DM. How are you? Is the camera still shaky, guys? It looks pretty stable to me here now. Just let me know as we go. I hope all you guys are having a great weekend. So that more or less is going to be our rough composition. So we've mapped out where all of the parts are going to go. I'll just tidy up with my eraser a little bit. Three oh eight a.m. Wow, well, you better go get some sleep, mate. Thank you very much for dropping in. I really appreciate it. It's actually just after five a.m. where I live, and I've just gotten up. So now I'm going to put some dark areas in here. So 
just using the side of the charcoal I'm just going to press down on the paper we're just going to fill it in like this being careful not to go over the outlines that I've already drawn so I'm going to have a two-tone background on this little composition we're going to have a darker section at the back and a lighter section closer to the front and there we have it now I'm just going to blend that in a little bit with my fingers Good morning, Dwayne. How are you today? Welcome to the stream. I'm so glad to have you here today. Guys, what I always do, I always have just some wipes nearby so that as I get the charcoal on my hands, I can just clean them off. It also helps to keep the oils in my fingers from getting into the paper. I always like to blend with my fingers a lot. But that's just one good way to help preserve the drawing and to stop it from... Uh... Hi, Azar. How are you today, mate? Good to see you. So it just stops the oils from getting into your paper, which will end up leaving big oily fingerprints that you can't get rid of. Now I put the background in a little bit. That just gives me an idea of the tone that I'm going to be working towards. Now I'm going to put a little bit of the um, a little bit of the detail into the apples. We're not going to put too much detail in just yet. But what I want to do is look for the darkest areas and start to put those in. The apples have lots of little lines on them. I'm not going to draw every little line, but I'm just going to make some of the basic shapes just to help me understand. Yeah, brush is great for, for blending. I actually have a brush here that I often will use for charcoal blending. Sorry about that. We're not getting the focus. Um, another good thing that you can use for blending is a tissue. Some people like to use a tissue. Of course, blending stumps. You can use those as well. More or less any soft thing, or even hard things, that uh, that you can find that's handy. A lot of people will have a lot of different things, and depending on the blending they want, I'll use my finger to blend large areas. But if I want to get into a, a finely detailed area, I'll use something much smaller. Now we'll draw in a few more little marks here and there. Now I'm just paying attention to the direction that the marks go in on the apple. As I said, I'm not going to draw every single mark. We're just going to draw in the basic areas. I'm looking for areas where there's a lot of darkness. At the bottom of my apples, I've got some strong shadows. I'm going to draw those in. I'm not looking at being too fiddly with my details yet. I'm simply looking for shapes. Everything has a shape. Drawing is a lot to do with shapes. There are shapes that an object is, then there are also shapes in between objects. So the shape that an object is, for example, this shape on the apple, that's a, uh, a positive shape. We're drawing an actual thing. 
But then there's spaces in between things. For example, where the shadow is, it's a space between the two apples. I'm looking to draw that in. Periodically, I'm just going to come back in with my kneadable eraser and I'm going to just sharpen up the edges. Make sure that I don't lose anything here. We don't want to lose our edges. I'm going to put a little bit of the, the first part of the background in. It's much lighter in colour than the, the back part. At this stage of the game, I'm just feeling my way forward in the drawing, just starting to get a little bit of an idea. What will the tones be? What will the values be? I don't want to get bogged down in any particular section. I just want to keep building up the whole drawing so that I can see what I'm doing. Just keep drawing in the lines. Got a little bit wayward, it doesn't matter. I'm going to erase it. We'll go again. Charcoal is a very forgiving medium. It's very easy to fix mistakes with charcoal. How to preserve it? It's a very good question. Charcoal smudges very easily. That's why it's really nice to draw with. It also makes it hard to preserve your, your drawings afterwards. So one of the things that I often will use is a spray fixative. Um, I have one here, close to hand. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus on that. So basically, this is just a chemical sealant that goes over the top of your drawing and it will help protect it. It's not perfect and there can be some issues. So if you put too much of it on, you can end up with damp spots on your page and that can then lead to, uh, can lead to your charcoal bleeding and running. But also, it can uh, can cause little pools on the surface of the page that will end up making the the drawing look spotty after you've applied the the chemical. So it's something that you need to apply it lightly in different coats. Another thing that you can do is get a really soft, fine paper. Good morning, Archie Pineapple. How are you today? So a really soft, fine paper and then lay the sheet over the top of your drawing before you store it and put it away. That will help. One of the papers that I often would use is something like a tracing paper. It's got to be really smooth paper. Sometimes you can get a nice brown paper. Shiny and smooth is what you're looking for. So if it's rough or has much texture to it, it won't be very good. But if you store your drawings in between sheets of very smooth paper, the smooth paper will slip past and it won't grab the charcoal. Whereas if you use rougher paper, it will grip and it will drag and pull the, pull the charcoal off. So those are some of the things that I do. The other advice that I have is simply don't handle the drawing any more than you absolutely have to because charcoal will smudge no matter what you do. So try to handle it as little as possible. If you're going to get your charcoal drawing framed, then do that early on. Just go, once you finish it, you can roll it up, put it in a tube and sit it aside till you're ready to get it framed. Take it to the framer and off you go.
So I'm just looking for a few little areas here in the in the drawing where I can make some marks just to help me find my way. I tend to measure by eye in the drawing as I go, but I've been doing this for a while. A good way for a beginner is often to use an object to measure things with. For example, I could grab the paintbrush I had a minute ago. I can hold it across the drawing and using my thumb, I can work out the measurement of a shape. And then I can apply that to other areas and I can use that to understand how are my measurements going. Have I got the proportions correct? So actually, I haven't been on very much lately. Have you been streaming? <laughs> Bogus dicks. Yeah, absolutely. Comics on lockdown. How are you today? Art Color Gamut, how are you? Glad to, glad to see you guys. Thank you so much for joining the stream. We're drawing some apples today. We're doing a, a basic charcoal lesson in how to do some, some charcoal drawing. Now, guys, I'm not going to have time to make regular videos for the next little while. So I'm just going to be streaming for a bit. Um, I'm not sure what the frequency will be yet. And that will probably vary from week to week. But if there's something you guys would like to see, if there's something you'd like to know, um, leave it in the, in the chat here, drop it in the comments below, whatever you want to do, and I'll try and get to it at some point. I'm looking to try and leave the white of the paper where the highlights will be. But I still want to cover in as much of the white as possible. Anywhere there's a big white section glaring in my drawing makes it difficult for me to judge the balance of the whole drawing. Good night, DM. Thank you for dropping in. I'm glad to see you, mate. Keep sketching, keep working. I haven't been to see one of your videos for a little bit, but keep up the good work, mate. Have a good night. So the process really is just a question of refining once we've made a start. If you're using a medium such as ink, you've got to put your lines exactly where you want them in the first place because you can't move them very much. But with charcoal and some of these other things, it's not hard to move it. And so your drawing can be a bit more exploratory. You can just play with it and feel your way forwards, which is how I like to work rather than having a predefined plan and to do something exact. Artsy Pineapple, yes, I am very close to 400 subs. Seems to be sitting at 398. Hopefully it goes up and not down. But anyway, it's all part of the YouTube grind, isn't it? We're all in the same boat. Charcoal is a very good medium if you want to draw expressively. One of the ways I love to use charcoal is to get a large sheet of paper up on a surface and be able to, uh, to just draw using my whole arm. With little drawing like this, I can't really, you know, this is just an A4 sheet of paper. It's quite small for me and uh, I can't really get my shoulder into, uh, into the strokes. And so we get bogged down with some of these little fiddly lines and, and details 
sometimes we lose a bit of the passion that we would put into our drawings. But this is a good way for me to demonstrate to you guys without getting my head in the way. So let me know if you like the setup. Let me know. I've got a few things I need to figure out, like how to get rid of the camera details off the screen and stuff. But little by little, we'll figure it all out. I'm using willow charcoal today. And well, thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Yes, I do respect the artwork. And I think if you're not going to put your heart into the artwork, it's not really artwork. You just being a photocopier or you're trying to draw something, you know, for some other purpose. Art very much is about how you feel. It very much is about what's going on inside yourself and being able to recreate that and share that with other people. So ultimately, now, art just isn't our ability to recreate something, but it is much more about our ability to tell our story or tell a story through our artwork. What do you guys think? You tell me. I always have opinions, but it's just my opinion. Creative Minds, hello, good morning. Welcome to the stream. Glad to see you, mate. I hope you're going well. We're drawing some apples today. A little bit of a charcoal demonstration. Why did the apple go to the hospital? Because it wasn't peeling very well. Now, one of the interesting things about my drawing today is, Soraya, good morning. How are you today? Glad to see you. The last drawing that I did on this sketchbook, I did a lot of scribbling. So I'm actually picking up a lot of the lines of that scribbling. <laughs> yes, I know. I know all about my jokes. Don't worry. But I have to do them. I just have to. There are always many, many little lines on apples. I love apples for beginners because there's just so many things to see. You think an apple is quite a, a, a simple shape, kind of like a circle, and it can be. It can be very simple, but it also can be very intricate and very detailed. And so it's a great thing to come back to and try again and again. There's something I often like to do. I'm not going to do it very much this morning or I'll make a big mess, but we can put down a little bit of a bed of charcoal that we can then pick up with whatever we're blending with. 
Now, I don't normally draw on this desk with my charcoal, but normally I have a wooden drawing board and I can just put a little bit of charcoal down. That just gives me the ability to just take a little tiny bit of charcoal and just blend it in to the areas where I want it. A lot of people who do very fine realistic work will use this technique. It's a good way just to get more control. Particularly with something like charcoal where you probably don't have quite as much control as you do over something that's more like a, a pencil. Just gives you that little bit of an ability to take some of it and give it a clean. I'm going to clean my hands again. I clean my hands pretty frequently when I'm drawing with charcoal. As I mentioned before, just to avoid some of those problems with oils. Thank you very much, Clouded Minds, for reminding people about that like button. It doesn't bite. It hasn't got teeth. You'll be fine if you hit it. And I always appreciate all the support that you guys give me. Absolutely. It's a wonderful thing. One thirty pm for you. Well, there you go. Archie Pineapple, it happens to be, um, what have I got? It's got the clock on it. Nothing. It's just after five here sometime, 5.20 or something. So I've been getting up early to have a look at doing these streams. It seems to be the time of day that is quiet for me. And it's also a good internet time for me. Later in the day can be a bit more challenging internet wise i have a satellite internet connection and the upload speed is quite slow so once the network gets bogged down with a lot of traffic um, i'm not sure how i would go with a live stream but we'll see how we go Eleven thirty two for you, clouded. It's always interesting the uh, the time differences that everybody has. Here in Australia, we often seem to be half a day in front of everyone else. So for me, it's Sunday morning. And I know for a lot of you guys, it's still Saturday. Which is fine. It means I get to go back to work on Monday sooner than you do. But I also get to Friday sooner, which works in good for me. Teacher by profession, but for a while. I teach a few small classes here and there. And uh, over the years in different towns that I've lived in, I've had uh, you know, small periodic workshops that I would run or different things like that. Charcoal is one of my favourite things to teach people. Because it's one of my favourite things to work with. We just make some little marks here. But art teaching is something that I'm interested in, definitely. Something that hopefully I will work my way towards. And these live streams are intended to be a beginning in that, to, uh, to do more online tutorials and to have more interaction in the tutorial, I guess. If I just make a tutorial at home and put it up on YouTube, good morning, the joy of watching a painting. Glad to see you there. Um, world peace hasn't been solved by Sunday, I'm sorry, mate. But um, 
How does that one go? Why did the man buy so many green vegetables? He wanted world peace. All right, that's pretty bad. Anyway. Does anybody have any idea what I was talking about? I get distracted very easily, guys. World peace, an end to starvation and poverty and all those things. Definitely, that's a, that's our primary objective, isn't it? I don't know how we're going to achieve it, but we'll keep going. Yes, I put a lot of work on Instagram. <clears throat> Instagram is probably the, the platform where you're most likely to find me. I have tried to muck around a little bit with Discord, but I'll be honest with you, I just don't have a whole lot of spare time. So learning new social media platforms is not high on the priority list for me as to how I spend that time. But at the same time, we all have to find a way to promote our work or to promote ourselves and what we're doing. And the difference between going live and making a video at home. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Absolutely. Video at home. Um, the only thing that I can think about is what do I think you need to know? It's all about what's going on in my head. Whereas in a live situation, you can ask me questions. You can ask me what you want to know. And that makes a big difference. When you actually have a student in front of you, in some regard, you can teach them what they want to know rather than what I think they need to know. And that makes it uh, a much better learning experience for that person because they're getting the information they want not just the information that I think is important. Can I show my collection? Um, in a video perhaps at some point? Some of those things might happen in the future. They're not going to happen right away um, because I'm not going to have a lot of spare time for the next little while. But those are all good suggestions that I will take on board. Yeah, connection is very important. And it's one of the things that we sometimes lose in the modern world with the, an, a more internet-based society. We sometimes lose that personal connection that we can build with each other. So I think you're very right, Clouded. It's important that we have the ability to talk to each other and interact and And yeah, sharing is very important. Sharing is a, a vital component of what we do. We're not in a vacuum. We don't live in, a, in isolation. And so being able to share what we've learned is actually one of the greatest gifts that we can give to ourselves. It leaves you very pleased or very happy that you are able to share 
but also you learn more as you go. You're able to refine your thoughts more. Since I started making online tutorials or even just teaching in general, it's something that it's helped my work because as I'm trying to explain what I'm doing, I'm defining it more closely for myself. I'm understanding better what I'm doing. And sometimes somebody asks me a question that I don't know the answer to. And then I have to go and learn something new, which is great. Everybody needs some friends in the world. Everybody needs to have that ability to connect and interact with each other. Absolutely. Well, definitely some of us need some alone time as well. We still always need that time with friends and family. And maybe you don't have a situation where you have a lot of friends and family that you can get access to, particularly in these traveling times where we can't travel much. So the internet has been a tremendous vehicle for helping people keep in touch and being able to still engage with each other. And that's a fantastic thing. There's lots of little marks on this apple. I just want to put some of them in. I never really set out in a drawing, even if I'm looking for a very realistic finish, I never really try to draw every little thing that's on there. I just look at what are the general aspects. I'm looking for types of things rather than specific things, if that makes any sense. Can't paint and talk at the same time. Look, it's challenging. I think it's a practice. I found it difficult at first, but I'm getting better at it. The big problem is sometimes I forget to talk. I'm so caught up doing some details. And sometimes I get so caught up talking and I forget to draw. But... Trying to get a little bit darker in the background here. I want more contrast. The contrast will really bring these apples forward. Now, willow charcoal is a lovely soft charcoal. It's very forgiving. It's a great thing for a beginner, but one of the downfalls of it is that it doesn't get as dark as some of the other charcoal. Now, this piece is getting quite small now, getting very difficult for me to pick up. I guess I have larger fingers. It's a small triangle shape now, and I'm going to start dropping that an awful lot. So I'll probably refresh it with another piece. I always have plenty of charcoal on hand. It's relatively inexpensive compared to some of the more expensive things. like colouring in pencils, for example. I bought a small set of Prismacolor pencils. They were quite expensive. They're very nice pencils. But art can be an expensive business.
So we can end up with a little bit of reflected light on these apples, which is another reason why I like them. So the light can bounce off one apple and end up in the shadowed area of the apple next to it. And that gives us a little bit more visual interest that we can play with. Usually speaking, the darkest area of shadow will be right next to the lightest area of the highlight. Now all the main shapes are in, it's really just a question now of refining it and turning it into or achieving the detail level that you want to achieve. And that's going to vary from person to person. What do you actually want? You know, I can blend this in and make it look more realistic, but lines are where we get a lot of the energy in your drawings from. And if we blend all the lines in, then we lose a lot of that energy. I don't want to take all of the interesting marks away because that's what drew me to this subject in the first place. That's what made me want to draw these apples. So I'm not going to blend this in to a highly finished state. It's not what I'm looking for. I'm just going to keep adding a few little marks, a few little details. I can only imagine, Dwayne, that in Jamaica, everybody probably has sweaty palms. From what I understand, I've never been, but it's pretty hot there, if I understand rightly. So charcoal, you're right, would be a challenging medium for you. In that case, um, something like this might be a better option, a charcoal pencil, where you're not having your hands directly on it. Well, thank you very much. It's a very kind thing to say. I very much appreciate it. Let me just take that line out. It doesn't need to be there. We've lost that corner now. We'll just do that and it'll come back. And it's that easy just to modify things. If there's some little thing you don't like, you just move some charcoal. And the charcoal will move because we're using a nice soft charcoal. If we use a harder charcoal, it won't move as easily. For example, a compressed charcoal. Like the charcoal that you usually find in the pencils. Add a little bit more darkness here. I can just use my finger just to erase a little bit of it, just to keep that little bit of reflected light bouncing off the side. And a little bit more darkness here. Good morning, Monty. How are you today? Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you on board, mate. We're drawing some apples. Well now, Dwayne, I think that your idea of hot and my idea of hot might be a little bit different too. Although I do live in a country where there are a lot of hot places, I actually happen to live in one of the colder parts of Australia. So I don't experience very high temperatures. I've lived in parts of Australia where it's common to be over 40 degrees, but here in summertime, a lot of our temperatures are only in the, the 20s. 
So day where it might get up to 30 degrees is really hot for me now. Just gonna add a little bit more sharpness to the shadow just to make it stand out. You can draw a hard edge to something to make it stand out. You can draw a soft edge to it to add a little bit more mystery. I'm going to build up this foreground a little bit, add a little bit more tone to it. That will help it to contrast with the, the highlighted areas of the, of the apples themselves. Now there is a cloth here that I'm only just indicating a few hints at. I'm not going to draw the every little fold and detail of it. I don't normally go to that level of detail in my drawings because it's not a drawing about a cloth. It's a drawing about some apples. And the apples are the important part for me. That's where I want most of the focus to go with this simple little drawing. I'm going to blend in the very last parts that are still left sitting white. I want them to just come back a little bit and then we're going to cut back in with a kneadable eraser to get the very final white highlights that we're look, looking for to, to give it some, uh, some final bits of detail. That'll give it more texture. Now, there'll be some areas where the light is shiny on the on the surface of this apple. I'm looking for some darks first. I'm going to put those in and then we'll come back in and we'll add the highlights. Lots of little spots and dots and things on the apples. I'm not going to draw all of them, but I'm going to just mark a few of them in just to add a little bit more visual interest. Thank you, Duane. It's very kind of you, mate. Australia is an interesting country. We do have a lot of interesting plants and animals. And I'll be doing some of those in drawings on this live stream as we come up, as we go along. So if you're interested in those sorts of things, by all means, check it out. So I'll try to keep to some sort of a routine posting schedule, but We'll probably leave something on Instagram just to let you guys, guys know from week to week what I'm going to be doing. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of detail. I stop and clean my hands again. Now I'm just looking for the very lightest parts of the drawing now. Places where the light is just reflecting. It's one of the great things about apples is they reflect light because they're nice and shiny. So I'm going to put a little bit more charcoal on there. First, just to darken those sections, create a little bit more contrast. I love these kneadable erasers. You can make them any shape that you want. They go really well. You can get a sharp line, you can get a wide blob, you can get any shape you want to get.
And we just cut the chalk all out. Wherever we want to make a little bit more light. And that's pretty much it, guys. I don't need to do too much more or we'll be just overworking what we've done. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your company this morning. We'll get better and better at this as we go. I'll figure out the technology and uh, I look forward to spending more time with you guys. If there's anything you want to see, don't be afraid to leave a comment below. Let me know. Until then, have a great day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.